Hey everyone, I hope your Tuesday is going well, that the pre-ACT didn't hurt your brains too much. I know that it is a long test to take in the morning, so we are going to get into some notes, but you're not going to have any homework. Let your brain rest a little bit and come back and we'll finish the notes tomorrow. You should have already watched the video over how transformations can be used in the real world. Just one example that they use it in graphics and animation, which is pretty cool. Um, and they can be very complicated, but we're, what we're going to focus on is just the four different types of transformations and being able to do basic transformations. So we're going to get going with the notes. You should have the packet in front of you. It was two pages. It says transformation notes at the top. So if you don't have that, make sure you get that from the substitute first. Also, if you don't have headphones today, this is on YouTube, so instead of distracting the people around you by playing it out loud, there's that little CC in the bottom right corner. Go ahead and click that closed captioning. Turn your volume off so that you can watch me talk instead of listening to me talk, unless you have headphones, of course, and then you're good to go. I'm going to go ahead and get my document camera set up here. So we've got our transformation notes. So we saw from the video about animation that our transformations, and there are three different types. We've got our reflection, which is basically like a flip. We've got translations, which is just moving a figure, sliding it. We have ro um, rotations, which is going to turn a figure, and then dilations, which makes it bigger or smaller. So we're just going to focus on reflections and translations for today. We'll do the other two tomorrow. So first, some important vocabulary here that if we are moving, um, if we're doing a transformation and changing some figure from one form of that figure to another form of that figure, uh, this is the oper operation is called a transformation, but we call that original figure the pre-image. So that would be your original, whatever you're dealing with. And then that new image that you create is called the image. It's a little weird because we would think whatever we're starting with is the image and then maybe we create something else. But we've got a pre-image and then the image is whatever you create from that. A transformation can do some different things. It can change the size of a figure. It can change the orientation, which just means like how it's facing the orientation, or it can change the, what am I missing, position. So depending on what we're doing, or it might be a combination of the things, but we're going to focus on a reflection. So with a reflection, it's not going to change the size, but it is definitely going to change the orientation and the position. So a reflection is just a flip, if we want to put it in layman's terms, over a line called the line of reflection. You might also hear it called the line of symmetry. And each point and its pre-image end up being equidistant or the same distance from the line of reflection. Your possible lines of reflection really could be any line, but typically we're going to be dealing with the x-axis or y-axis. You could have it flipped over a vertical or horizontal line, so recall vertical lines, since they can't be written in that y equals mx plus b, they're always in the form x equals and then a number. If it's a horizontal line, it's always y equals and then a number because that slope is zero. And then it could be flipped over a diagonal line in the form y equals x or y equals negative x. Now for what we're dealing with, I want you to be able to re uh, reflect something over the x-axis or y-axis. We're not going to worry too much if we're not able to do this part. Um, it's not too much harder really, but the x-axis and the y-axis is what we're going to focus on. So you already have one example filled in for you. Notice that for that pre-image, they're just going to have regular letters A, B, and C to mark those different points. For our image, we're going to have a little dash um, kind of in the exponent. It's called a prime. So this is an A prime, B prime, C prime, and this is what's telling us this was the pre-image and then the A prime, B prime, C prime 
is the image that was created. This one is reflected about the x-axis. So notice that A was two units above the x-axis, and now it's two units below, but the x value didn't change. Same thing for C, it was one above, and now it's one below. B was seven above, and now it's seven below the x-axis. If we look at the ordered pairs, my negative four, two ended up being a negative four, negative two. B ended up being four, seven is now four, negative seven and then C is at 5, 1, and now it's at 5, negative 1. So none of our X's changed because we were flipping them down and not left or right. So my X's all stayed the same, my Y's just became negative. And if they were negative to begin with, they would have become positive because I would have flipped it up. So you've got the visual part of it, but then also kind of seeing some patterns of what happens with the order pairs. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to example two and go ahead and plot your P, Q, R, and S for this rectangle, and it gives you each ordered pair. So go ahead and plot your P at 1, 2. We've got Q at 2, 5. What's nice about this is that it does tell you what it should look like. It tells us it's a rectangle. So if you plot your four points and it doesn't look like a rectangle, then we know we need to back up because it should look like a rectangle when we're done. Got R at 8, 3, and then S at 7, 0. And it looks pretty well like a rectangle. Woo. Okay, so this one is different. We are reflecting about the y axis. So we've got a couple of ways that we can go about it, and you kind of notice the pattern here. So instead of being equidistant from the x-axis, we'll be equidistant from the y-axis. So I'm going to start with P. And since it was one unit from the y-axis, now it's going to be one unit away on the other side. So there's my P prime. With my ordered pair, it's going to be at negative 1, 2. So notice this time my x value is what changed signs. For S, it was seven units away from the y-axis, so now it's gonna be seven units away on the other side. So my S prime is at negative seven, zero. Once we see the pattern here, we know that just the X value is changing signs. I could go ahead and say my Q will be at negative two, five, my Q prime, and then R prime will be at negative eight, three. But then visually, I want to go ahead and make sure that that's true. So my negative 8, 3 for Q prime. And then, oh, I think I put the wrong, didn't I? Yep. My bad. This is R prime. And then Q prime was at negative 2, 5. And when we're done, we have a really nice visual check because we should be able to see that all of those points, that it is reflected, that this is the line of reflection or the line of symmetry. They're the exact same mirror images on either side. Okay, so I want you to go ahead and try number three and number four. Pause the video. I actually do want you to pause it. Okay, pause the video and try both of those. Um, one of them is in the y-axis and one of them is in the x-axis. So be careful there that you're doing it correctly. Pause it and then look at the answers. So here's what you should have for three and four. Oh, that was a really thick highlighter. <laughs> That wasn't super helpful, was it? Um, my pre-image over here on the left and then my image on the right. Um, again, telling us it's a trapezoid, so if you graphed it and it didn't look like a trapezoid, back up, be careful um, with plotting your points. And then this was reflected about the y-axis, so it should end up on the right. Check all of your ordered pairs here. And then for four, this was in the x-axis, just like that first one. So we had our pre-image actually ended up being um, below the y or the below the x-axis. So then our image ended up being above. 
all of those y values changing from being negative to being positive since it got flipped up.